What's up guys, Jason from Tech for Tech and we'll be looking at the note taking capabilities of the Book Pro 360. The model I currently have with me is the Intel Core i5 11th gen with 8 gigs of RAM. Watch my previous video to see a more in-depth version of me talking about my experience with this laptop. We will cover four main points in this video, which are the S Pen, the different softwares you can use to take notes on the Book Pro 360, the pressure sensitivity, and the palm rejection. As said before, you get the S Pen for free in the box when you purchase the Book Pro 360. It's not too heavy, but also not too light. It feels just right, and it feels the right amount of premium. It's much larger and thicker than Samsung's previous S Pens in the Galaxy Book Flex, but one of the pros of having that small form factor is that you're able to fit the S Pen in the laptop's body. This year, the S Pen doesn't fit inside the laptop, but instead, Samsung provided magnets at the back of the laptop where you could fit the S Pen on. It's located right here, and you just slap it on. And one of the main reasons I do not like doing this is because when walking around, when putting in your laptop bag, it has a high chance of the pen falling out and you losing it. The magnets are strong, don't get me wrong, but rubbing it against something can easily let it fall off. I would rather have it inside the laptop body. Another thing I like about the S Pen is that I get a physical button to press. This gives you a more genuine feedback and reassurance that you're actually pressing the button compared to the Apple Pencil. This year's S Pen doesn't feature Bluetooth gestures and that's quite a bummer but to be honest last year I didn't really use it that much. This S Pen features a rubber tip and this is such a massive improvement compared to Apple's Apple Pencil that features a plastic tip. It makes such a difference writing on glass because it feels like you're writing on actual paper. That's not for the S Pen, let's now talk about the different softwares you can use to take notes on the Book Pro 360. To open Samsung Notes, you bring the pen close to the screen, you press the button and you get this option over here just like the Notes series. You click Create Note and you have your notes open right here. Now it's a little different with OneNote because you have to press Search, type OneNote or you have it right there. You click OneNote and it opens up. This shows Samsung's good integration with Windows and this is what Samsung is trying to do to push that ecosystem more forward. Opening Samsung Notes gives you a lot of options. You have the keyboard option, which is just like Microsoft Word. You get the bold, italic, underline, all these sort of things. Then you move to the pen section where it gives you a whole loads of different pens. You have the pen, a different type of pen. One second, let me change the color so you can see it better. You have this type. Oh, one second please, you have this type, this type, which is a normal pen that I use for writing notes, this is more for artists that want to do fancy things, you have this, which is, I, th I think it's similar to this, but I think it's similar to the first one, but it's just a different colour, you can't change the colours over here obviously, but in the stock settings, this comes as white and this comes as blue. Then you have the pencils, the two different pencils, and voila. So you have five different type of pens in the Samsung Notes. Keep that in mind for when we move to one note. Then you move to the highlighter. With the highlighters, you have again four different types of highlighters, a whole lot of different colors. Nothing new here. You move to the eraser. You can have erase by line. Let me give you an example for that. So if I write something like subscribe. If you have, if you choose erase by line, for example, it erases everything the computer thinks is associated with where you want to erase. So if I click erase this, erase this, erases everything. But let me write it again. If I choose erase by area, it's more like a traditional eraser where it erases things that you actually touch. You can change the size of the eraser and get this little visual representation here. 
Personally, I think Samsung Notes looks a lot more visually pleasing than OneNotes because it's a lot less cluttering, a lot less confusing, and it's just straight to the point. Now let's move to OneNote. OneNote gives you more Microsoft Word vibes, which is a lot more cluttering, a lot more all over the place, confusing compared to Samsung Notes, where it's just literally lined up cleanly and perfectly for what you need. With OneNote, you have three main options, the home page, inserts and draw. With the home page, it's a lot like Microsoft Word, as I said earlier, you have your bold, italic, underline, all these things for writing notes. Then you move to insert. With insert, you can create tables, you can attach files, blah, blah, all those normal stuff. When you go to draw, that's where the art comes into play. With draw, you have a lot of different pens, a lot of different pens, colors, highlighters, eraser, and I think shapes, and that's, that's basically where it all stops. Samsung Notes gives you a lot more options. OneNote is more for the basic note taking. One advantage though that I love about OneNote is the endless, endless, endless paper. You can keep going, going, going endlessly. Like the, the scrolling just never stops. Compare that with Samsung Notes, for example, now. With Samsung Notes, you lim let me change the paper to white. Let me change the color. So with Samsung Notes, you've got, oh, I've changed the color to white now. With Samsung Notes, you've got normal rectangular, rectangular paper. This is not good at all. I do not like this. Writing stops at the edge. Like, come on. No, we do not want this. We want this, where you can endlessly keep scrolling. Scroll, scroll, scroll for as much as you want. Scroll, scroll, scroll for as much as you want. This, not, this, because I, I normally like to keep my paper dark, easier on my eyes. But with Samsung Notes, you can barely tell the difference between this and the background. I just do not like it. I do not like this style at all, no. Now let's move to pressure sensitivity. Pressure sensitivity on the Galaxy Book Pro 360 is actually really, really accurate and good. I start off slow, I start off slow, thin, then I start putting in more pressure. Voila. Let me increase the pen pen size so you can see the bigger difference. So I start off slow, then I start putting in more pressure. Go back to slow, less pressure, more pressure, less pressure, more pressure, less pressure, more pressure. It's a really smooth transition going from no pressure to high pressure. That's not, you can't, you can't really see chunks where you can tell the difference, where you can tell that it's going from low pressure to high pressure. You can just see it's a smooth transition like that. So that's great for Samsung Notes. And if we move to OneNotes, I would say pressure sensitivity on OneNote is great as well. Like, let me start off low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure. Low pressure, high pressure. You, as you can see, it's really, really similar. So I'll give this a tie for both of them. They did a really, Samsung really did a good job optimizing OneNote for, for the Book Pro 360 because Samsung and Microsoft have been working really, really good together to create a more closer ecosystem. This is what I love because Apple has done, Apple controls everything. Apple have their own apps, their own hardware, their own software, they have everything, they, they work everything works so good together. So now Samsung is creating all these ecosystems with Google and Microsoft because they are the two most biggest operating systems for mobile, for mobile phones and laptops and computers. Moving on to palm rejection. Now I was writing some notes earlier and most of the time that palm rejection failed was on OneNote. Samsung Notes does a really, really good job detecting palms and, and removing it. Like I had barely any issue writing with a, with Samsung Notes compared to OneNote. It probably won't show it live, but let's try a little test. So let me just, so, oh, press the, press the eraser there. Press the eraser again, sorry guys. Really trying to make it all neat and tidy.
Voila. Right. No problem at all. Let's move to one note. As you can see, the B there struggled a bit. Again. Again. So you see what I'm talking about? Samsung needs to Samsung needs to optimize OneNote a, a lot more. Again, the palm reject palm rejection is just not it. It's it's just not the best. I have to lift my palm up to write this now. Move back to Samsung Notes. Let's erase this. Go back to no. Go back to um erase by line so it's gonna be quicker. Don't wanna waste your time. Let's go back to the pencil. Again, Samsung did a really good job. Now you can't say that the, that the paper is only to hit so my palm is not resting on the paper. If I move to the light theme again, you can see the paper is all the way here. My palm was resting on the paper. Let me turn back to black here. I keep pressing the rubber, uh, the eraser. Right. Samsung Notes did a really good job erasing the um, palm rejection. I would expect that because this is a Samsung laptop, but I recommend Samsung and Microsoft to go back to the drawing board and optimize OneNote because OneNote is just not the best with palm rejection at all. That is the reason why I prefer writing notes on one on Samsung Notes compared to OneNotes. That's it for the video guys. Thanks for watching. If you stay till the end, you're a legend. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.